I'd like to welcome everybody to the October 17th meeting of the Newburn Board of Aldermen. And tonight the prayer will be given by Alderman Bernard White. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. If you can, or if you don't mind, I'd like for everybody to stand at least on the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, to Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything we receive. The Heavenly Father, I ask you to continue to bless our families. Watch over them. Keep the blood, the blood flowing warm through our veins, dear Lord. Protect us. Keep us from all evil. Keep that which is bad away from us in your name, dear Lord. The Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this board of aldermen. Continue to let them be successful. Let the city continue to grow. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Blackiston? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Alderman Mitchell? Here. Mayor Outlaw? Here. Alderman Kinsey? Here. Alderman White? Here. Alderman Odom. Here. Okay, everybody's present. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any petitions? No, sir. Okay, uh, Alderman Taylor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make an amendment to the agenda. I want to do a quick presentation of the project on News Boulevard this past uh, week uh, at the after the consent agenda. Okay, and do you have a second to that? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. At this time, the consent agenda. Mayor, I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Oh. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Eva uh, Osteen Bell to come forward to the podium and Mr. Matt Montaigne, Public Works Director. And I, I'll, as you're looking on the monitors up there, you see this is News Boulevard running into MLK and uh, right by the Taco Bell across the street from uh, AutoZone. As you see here, as this le at this level, it looks safe. But in a vehicle, it's a very unsafe area uh, to travel. If you're going where the car there, Mercedes is right there on the left-hand side, left the right lane, if you're trying to turn left at that turn right there, you cannot see to the right. There's been a lot of accidents that happened. People trying to turn left at that, at that intersection there, that little cut through. So that's a, that was a bad uh, area to, to uh, turn down. And also coming off of Clock Avenue, there was bad, uh, um, bad view there as well as you look further down on your left by past the car, car wash, there's Taco Lane. Before, if you try to turn on your left, you could not see to the right. So as you see now, there's, um, the uh, hedges are gone. It was an eyesore and a safety hazard. And the reason why I called Ms. Eva uh, to come forward and, and, and Matt Montaigne, as you see now, it looks like a whole different city now. You can actually see uh, all the way down the street, News Boulevard, all the way up the street to Martin Luther King. Safety hazard, it was a terrible safety hazard for years. I've been speaking on it, uh, I've been talking to Eva, Eva has been speaking on it, and it's finally come to fruition. So I asked Eva, to step forward to say her little piece about this project from the beginning to where it is now. Ms. Eva, thank you. Well, again, we took them out because of the safety hazards with the vehicular line of sight and uh, the number of accidents that have been happening. Uh, the plan is to this fall, this winter, to actually do some replanting of that area, but not with low growing shrubs, but with some medium canopy trees something that's a native tree that's going to lend a little beauty but still keep that visual line of sight open something like maybe some dogwoods or some redbuds so that's where we're going to move forward through with this winter it'll also give us the opportunity since there weren't trees there in some of the areas in the city where we've taken trees out and removed but cannot replace due to infrastructure or existing problems 
this will give us another location to pick up those tree requirements where we're meeting tree for tree for removal and replanting and sustain our canopy. Okay. Thank you very much. And she, she was uh, uh, very instrumental in getting this project done. I spoke to uh, several uh, business owners in that area since the uh, hedges has been removed. They, did, they made a, a statement that now that they're gone, they actually can get out safely into their business and out of their business safely without worrying about uh, pulling out in front of a vehicle that's coming to, uh, down the road. So again, the residents has been calling me about this safety hazard that morning about six or seven o'clock. About seven o'clock, I got phone calls from residents that uh, parks and uh, public works was out there doing the thing. I, I got in my car and I went out there. Yes, um, I, that's why I called public work uh, director Matt Montana to, uh, if he wouldn't say anything, but his guys was out there in full force uh, about 7 a.m. that morning, uh, making sure it happened. So this is the after, and you've seen it before. Again, I wanted to thank you all personally for everything that you all done, getting this um, uh, coming to pass. But look at this. This is beautiful. That's how it used to look. And the second pay, uh, picture is what it looks like now. If you have opportunity to ride down there, think about what it used to look like and what it looks like now. Safety throughout the city is important. Again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you all for everything. Thank you. Mayor, one, one yes. thing I, I want to make sure to manage the expectations on the trees uh, specific to that area. Uh, while we will go back and try to beautify uh, some of that area, we do have a proposed traffic circle that's going to be located there. So we will want to make sure and, and, and uh, uh, manage the expectations of what will be there because in about two years there's actually supposed to be a very large project going on there. So, but we will try to put back what we can that won't be disturbed hopefully uh, with, throughout that construction process. Okay, let's go to number seven. Presentation of the 2017 Beautification Awards, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the Board, uh, the Appearance Commission annually recognizes business owners and residents for, the beautif uh, for their beautification efforts in the city. Uh, a winner in both categories is chosen from each ward, and the awards uh, will be presented tonight to those who are in attendance. So at this time, I would uh, ask uh, members of the Appearance Commission, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Montaigne at this point, uh, to come on up. Good evening, Board. As Mark indicated, each year the Appearance Commission awards uh, residential property owners and business property owners the Beautification Awards. Uh, the only thing I like to say about them is it's not just about landscaping, it's about the cleanliness of the property and the overall curb appeal. Um, so at this time I'd like to ask the Appearance Commission to join me up front, me. as well as anybody from the board that would like to join us down here as we recognize the residential and commercial winners from each ward. From Ward 1 Residential Property, 304 Johnson Street, Genevieve Mokul. <laughs> Commercial Property in Ward 1, 509 Pollock Street, the area b, &B Keith and Dina Thalman. Ward 2 residential, <clears throat> we actually had a tie as it was a duplex, and it was 1012A and 1012B Kings Way, which is Rexy, Rexy Allen and Diane Hawkins, and Kevin and Tracy House.
Ward 2 commercial property goes to Woodlands Crossing Apartments. Ward 3 residential is 130 Hawks Pond Road, William and Laura Sherratt. <laughs> Ward 3 Commercial, 2032 Waterscape Way, Carolina Keller Swimming Pool. Ward 4 Residential, 204 Derby Park Avenue, Deborah and Phil Malier. <laughs> Ward 4 Commercial, 2900 News Boulevard, Wendy's Restaurant. Ward 5 Residential, 1606 Hazel Avenue, Donald and Archibella Monk. <laughs> Ward 5 Commercial, 1617 National Avenue, Randy Quidley, Riverside Hardware. Ward 6 Residential, 3702 Yarmouth Road, Michael and Nancy Weatherly. And last but not least, Ward 6 Commercial goes to Michael and Kim Hearn of Hearn's Jewelers. Thank you. Presentation by the Craven County Alcoholic Beverage Control Board, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor members of the board. At this time, I'd like to invite the chairman of the Craven County ABC Board uh, up to the podium. He's going to make a presentation on the ABC Board's goals and objectives for fiscal year 17-18. Uh, he's also going to present the annual check to, uh, for the city's allocation of revenue generated by the sales of spirits. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and Board. It's wonderful to see you all and staff. Uh, we've had a great year at Craven County's ABC Board. Um, we did have a little bit of a change this year. Our store manager that was at uh, the Glen Burnie store, Mr. Uh, uh, Paul Brown, and you perhaps know Paul, has been uh, now elevated to uh, general manager after 32 years of wonderful service. Donna Rouse has, uh, has been retired. This evening with me, I have two of our members, Charles Collins and Barbara uh, Whiteman. I also have our Chief Finance Officer and uh, Ms. Uh, Patterson and uh, Ms. Uh, Brooke, uh, Store Manager of uh, Glen Burnie, along with two of our ALE agents uh, uh, who provide us great service. Uh, this is our mission, Mr. Mayor and Board. Uh, we really uh, belong, of course, being in uh, Newburn, you have to make sure that you have that uh, customer-friendly staff. Uh, that's our hallmark. Uh, uh, that's what we're known for, along with uh, uh, safe stores. Uh, this is our 85th year of operation in uh, Newburn. Uh, two years ago, several of your board members participated in that. It's Dallas, it's one. Uh, and uh, we are so happy to say that uh, during those uh, 87 years of service that uh, uh, we've not had a serious incident at a ABC store. 
Uh, this was our goals uh, this past year. They're in green, meaning that we met or exceeded them. Um, uh, one of the reasons why we have uh, Matt here with us tonight is uh, ALE. Uh, beginning of the, of the year, we had some issues, as you all know, uh, in New Bern and, and around Craven County with uh, clubs, uh, after hours, uh, uh, places, and, and so forth that were uh, casting a shadow upon the legitimate uh, and very friendly uh, restaurants and grills that we have here. Um, thanks to Matt and the City of New Bern and the Sheriff's Department, uh, we have uh, made very special effort to uh, get these people out of our community and um, well, we had a very successful time at doing that. Uh, also, we've uh, sponsored um, um, Matt's program, uh, When Love Is Not Enough. This is for uh, uh, our anti-underage drinking program, which is extremely successful leader in the state, we might add, and um, uh, we've given that to our school system and, and other interested uh, people in the community. Our goal this past year was uh, to, to get 3% uh, uh, revenue over previous year. We did that, um, and uh, that uh, helps us uh, generate uh, funding for the state of North Carolina, which you'll see, and Craven County, uh, cities of New Bern, Havelock, and Vanceboro. Um, and uh, these are some of the items uh, along there which we we have moved along and have had some success. I'd just like to address the one in red. I think uh, we all have a concern as the uh, uh, US uh, 70 comes to our communities exactly, uh, obviously, around, particularly around James City, uh, it will have a lot of uh, uh, problems as that construction site goes, uh, goes up, particularly on the ABC business. Uh, we're very, very well uh, in tune with that problem and we're probably going to be uh, moving that store. Um, also, as uh, uh, Harris Theater uh, is talking about moving out of their, <coughs> excuse me, their present store uh, on Glen Burnie, uh, that will create some other issues for us and we see uh, risk for our uh, investment. So we're looking at new stores. Um, You'll see by this slide, this is the, uh, um, the story of the bottle, if you will. You can see we're, we're, we're with $10,300,000 uh, that the state of North Carolina got nearly $3 million of that for excise tax. $3 million. Uh, next line underneath is the county, and you can see where Craven County got 807000 Now you see the uh, city of Newburn at sixty eight. 592, and so forth. So uh, uh, over a million dollars went to the local community of the county. Um, that is in addition to the money that we put in for law enforcement and other uh, underage, uh, anti-underage drinking programs. Uh, you can see that we've uh, really upped our game uh, in that area and uh, we're, uh, we're really uh, coming on strong. This makes the uh, fourth year in a row where we've increased the revenue uh, past our goal. Uh, there are some challenges uh, uh, to that. Uh, as we build a new store, that money will come from the distributions and, and from other, other revenues. So uh, as we, we go down that path, uh, we'll keep the uh, city informed um, of uh, how, how we're doing to, to make sure that you adjust the, uh, the cash flow uh, issues uh, with you. Um, other challenges will be um, uh, uh, where uh, the, the, uh, the state has asked us to, to uh, find a lot of the opioid uh, uh, programs, uh, and you'll see that coming along here this year, so to the tune of 7% will be mandated out of our gross, which will be somewhere around $75,000 will be made available uh, for Craven County. Um, this is what it looks like over the, uh, the years. We put it in pink uh, uh, for our uh, 
cancer program, I guess. I, actually, you can see that uh, pretty, pretty well. And you can see it's been a steady climb. Uh, we would tell you that uh, thanks to our, our, our tourism and our guests coming, that about 15% of this money is directly affected by guests coming to Newbern and Craven County. Uh, having said that, this is the best part of the deal. I get to uh, give you a, uh, a check here for the balance of uh, the 68000 We owe you that, and we're, uh, we have it in hand. Uh, along with the money that you'll be getting for this fiscal year will be coming your way here in uh, very short order. So uh, on behalf of uh, the ABC boards who are grateful uh, uh, and our grateful employees, uh, I'd like to present this to you. Okay. Okay. several questions. Yes, sir. Sir, out of the eight or seven years y'all been in that business, in that location, possibly, or uh, you probably moved in that location, who is the oldest of uh, who has been working there longer? I see uh, Mr. Collins. I've been knowing Mr. Collins for years, and I know he's been there for quite a while. Yes, Mr. Collins and Ms. Barbara have been with the board for uh, how many years now? Got to be over half the hour. Twenty-two. Uh, we we have uh, the oldest board members, but it was been around for about 20, 20 years, off and on. Uh, our oldest employee is uh, now thirty. Uh, would be Denise over at. Uh, James said he's not here right at the moment. About 30, uh, well, under 30 years. Well, I thought it'd be more than that. But then, uh, uh, I guess they appreciate your service. Okay, by reading, I say I guess they appreciate your service. Everybody know how I stand when it comes to alcohol. The, the other thing that I would like to know: what would the, the amount of money? I, I think I will ask you this question after we got the check. <laughs> okay, what was the amount that we received last year from you? You know. Uh, offhand, sir, I, 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 probably a finance officer has that right down to the last penny, but uh, um, I should have that one. I don't have it quickly with me. We can get it for you, sir. We, we can make sure we have a... a no, I just, you know, in, in my head, I, I have a figure which is very close to that. It might have been almost the same. That's the reason I asked the question. And the, the last question I have for you when you talked about this on the back, and I didn't get the full understanding of it, but I thought you said you were guessing. What's that? I you? thought I heard you say you guessed. I have a hearing problem. No, no, I, I see don't feel bad. It's uh, uh, I, I do too. At <laughs> this stage, okay. But uh, the, the question again, sir. I, I just want to know: Was this? Are these the figures? Are or is it a guess? This is the last. Uh, uh, since uh, 2004, we've been steadily going up since 2004. Okay, then. I guess I'll be satisfied with that for what time I have. Yes, sir. Any other questions? I think uh, you, we had talked a couple, about a half a year ago about the renovations at the downtown location. Could you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Yes, uh, in the plans, in the master plan, uh, we have uh, um, a renovation that we're going to make each store. Uh, in Craven County match the theme of its town uh, and the downtown store will have the theme of a uh, 1820 tavern. Um, we'll, it'll have the look of, a, of an 1820 tavern. Uh, the Glen Burnie store will have a, a look of um, uh, the, the emerald, the, you know, the Ireland kind of look, if you will, the forest look. Uh, wood, woodlands and so forth. Vanceboro will have a farming look. Mm -hmm. And the uh, new store is going to have a, a consolidated look of everything in Craven County. 
have Luxor, obviously, Marine Corps, and uh, so forth. So it's, it's going to have those looks. We have now got to the point where we made the stores uh, safe, uh, well lit, uh, painted, cherry, new flooring, new shelving, and now we're going to go to this next, this next level. Five years. It's going to take us five years to get it all done. That store will be the first one, the downtown store. Okay, good. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I have one closed out. Uh, Alderman Outlaw almost asked a question, but you were talking about relocation somewhere down the line, the James City store. You have, I was thinking one of the stores you were talking about was going to change out or move. Or you have an idea of where y'all really may locate this? Um, actually, sir, we're in very close hold negotiations right as we speak. It's going to be officially announced uh, by the uh, 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 Mr. Mark, I think, in probably about uh, eight to ten days. They're waiting for the November 6th uh, county board to announce it. So I... Thank you. Well, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And for the check. <laughs> <laughs> so good item number nine, consider adopting the 2018 holiday calendar, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor members of the board. Uh, in accordance with the personnel ordinance, the City of Newburn holiday schedule must be approved annually by the Board of Aldermen. This proposed schedule reflects the observance of 12 holidays during 2018, all of which uh, are also to be observed by the state of North Carolina and Craven County. It has been our practice over the last several years to mirror our schedule with Craven Counties, and uh, that is the case this year. Um, and uh, just real quick, I'll go through the dates. Um, you're looking at uh, New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, two days for Thanksgiving, the Thursday and Friday, and then three days at Christmas, the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with Christmas falling on Tuesday. I'm happy to answer any kind of questions you may have. The board have questions. Otherwise, if no one has had questions, questions about it, so move. Second. Motion by Alderman Kinsey, <laughs> seconded by Alderman Mitchell. Is there discussion? Seeing that, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, the same. The motion carries. Aye. Number 10. Consider adopting a resolution signing the Solid Waste Collection Services Agreement, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of the board, this is something that's kind of unusual, but it's a part of our contract uh, in April of this year. Uh, the city, as you will remember, entered into a five-year agreement with both Republic Services and Waste Industry. Republic Services handles our residential side, um, and Waste Industries handles the commercial side. Uh, Republic Services has recently sold certain assets to Waste Industries, which included the agreement with the city of Newburn. Um, so uh, within the contract provisions, um, it. Uh, requires the board to approve the transfer of this particular contract to Waste Industry. So that's what's before you tonight. Uh, and the board is asked to uh, consent to the assignment of the agreement from Republic Services to Waste Industries. Does, does this uh, change in the contract afford us the opportunity to go out for rebid with this change? Um, if you so choose to not, uh, I'd have to look at that map. Do you know specifically? Uh, we could look at it and see. Um, it's the same contract. It's the same contract, yeah. But I just didn't know since we just bid this last year, right? That is um, correct. Obviously, at April of this year. Those those bid numbers are public record, and some of the competition may want to take a second look at it. Um, just, but there's also one less, I guess, uh, person bidding it, so it could go either way. I was just curious. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Mayor, I recommend, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution assigning the Solid Waste Collection Services Agreement dated April 11th, 2017 between the City of New Bern and Republic Services of North Carolina, LLC to Waste Industries, LLC. Second. Motion by Alderman Mitchell, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there discussion? Seeing that we have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. <clears throat> Motion carries. I have number 11. Consider adopting a resolution initiating the upset bid process for 1221 Main Street. Mr. Stevens? 
Thank you, members of the board. Um, an offer of $1,000 was received from Love A. Wallace Singleton for the purchase of 1221 Main Street. This offer represents 25% of the tax value, which is $4,000. The vacant lot was acquired by the city and Craven <coughs> County in June 2013 through tax foreclosure. No other bids are received, and the property is sold for this initial offer. The city will receive $340.10 from the proceeds of the sale, and the county will receive $659.90. Uh, the city will also be reimbursed for the cost of the advertising necessary for the sale. I'm um, happy to answer any kind of questions you may have. Does the board have questions? None. I'd like to make a motion. Any questions? Go, go right ahead. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution initiating the upset bid process for 1221 Main Street. Second. Motion by Alderman Taylor, seconded by Alderman Blackston. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call, starting with Alderman Blackston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries on number 12. Consider adopting a resolution initiating the upset bid process for property on my Main Street, then files parcel number 8 dash 013 198. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Members of the board, an offer of $1,000 for was received from Love A. Wallace Singleton for the purchase of a vacant lot that's on Main Street, identified as tax parcel ID 8-013-198. Uh, this offer represents 25% of the tax value, which is $4,000. The vacant lot was acquired by the city and county in June of 13 uh, through tax foreclosure and sits adjacent to property located at 1221 Main Street, which you just approved. Um, if no other bids are received and the property is sold for this initial offer, the city will receive $340.10, uh, and the county will receive the same $659.90 as the previous item. I'm happy to answer any kind of questions, and we'll be reimbursed uh, for the advertising, by the way. Or any questions? And if not any questions, I'd like to make a motion on this one as well, adopting a resolution initiating the upset bid process for the property on Main Street identified as tax parcel ID 8-013-198. Second. Motion by Alderman Taylor, seconded by Alderman Blackston. Is there discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackston? Yes. Motion carries on number 13. May Consider. I, may we do both of those? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody have any questions about about these before we do them. Um, go ahead, Mr. Stevens, and announce what they are, and then sure. we can. Um, items 13 and 14, as long as it's unanimous, can be approved both uh, in conjunction with one another. Um, the first one is for approving the sale of 1114 William Street. Um, we received an offer of $1,500, tax value $4,000. Um, the city will receive $205, and the county will receive $1,295 if it's approved. And the other property was 1129 G Street. We received an offer of $1,500 uh, from Nether Hemingway on that one. The first one was LeVon Carter, by the way, was the offer uh, uh, who offered to purchase. Um, and uh, the, the last item there also has a value of uh, $4,000. Both of them um, had been put up for advertisement and no upset bids were received. There are no questions. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution approving the sale of 1114 William Street and the sale of 1129 G Street. Second. Motion by Alderman Mitchell, seconded by Alderman White. Is there a discussion? Have a roll call starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom. Yes. Motion carries. Let's go to appointments starting with Alderman Odom. Uh, none tonight, sir. Alderman White. No, sir. Alderman Kinsey. No, sir. Alderman Mitchell. No, sir. Alderman Taylor. No, sir. Alderman Blackiston. No, sir. Okay, at this time let's go to the attorney's report. That's an important night, Mayor. City manager's report. That's Three things, Mayor, that I want to bring up. Um, been in discussions with NCDOT with regards to uh, a draft agreement for us to take over 
uh, old airport road for a uh, considerable sum of money. Um, I wanted to uh, kind of give you a heads up on that. I will be reaching out to all of you uh, and it will probably be on your next agenda item, which will be next Tuesday um, for your consideration. Um, also, uh, we had a fantastic weekend for those who were able to come out. Obviously, we had a great weekend with Mumfest. Uh, started off Friday night with an, uh, a really awesome concert. Uh, Brett Young, Brian Mayer, Danielle Bradbury um, were there um, performing. And uh, I just want to uh, take an opportunity to give uh, some kudos to uh, my staff uh, for a job well done. It was a safe event. Um, we had very, very little uh, medical issues or uh, any kind of problems this year. Uh, knock on wood, hopefully that continues uh, um, for years to come and we continue to grow it. Uh, but obviously, um, Parks and Recreation, Public Works, Fire, Police, um, all had their hands in it. Uh, water as well uh, with the connections for our vendors um, and um, our electric department uh, assisted as well. So it's really a team effort and uh, they go the extra mile to make sure that uh, this city reaps the rewards of having so many people in our downtown. So uh, I would like to give them the kudos of that. Um, and then finally, um, I wanted to uh, make sure and point out uh, we have a new class of Leadership Craven folks here tonight. Um, they are uh, obviously a program that's offered by uh, our Chamber of Commerce. Uh, each year they do a, a leadership group um, in which they uh, have people sign up for. Uh, they attend uh, several different uh, board meetings as well as um, uh, typically they come talk to me. I think I responded, I don't know if the person I responded to is in the, in the crowd or not, but uh, they will come uh, talk about government, they'll talk about education. Um, and, and go to all these different locations, business and, and so forth and so on. And uh, it's an opportunity for them to really get to know uh, what it's like to be involved uh, with uh, things here in Craven County. So uh, those are the items that I have tonight. Okay, sir. This time we'll go to new business, starting with Alderman Blackiston. Yes, sir. I'd just like to echo uh, city manager's uh, comments about Mumpfest and the support of the staff. Um, I know the work that you do leading up to it, the preparations, the cleanup that you did before, and the cleanup that you did after. And I saw a lot of that. I know it's greatly appreciated by the residents, the businesses downtown, and all the visitors and participants. So thank, thank you very much. I'd like to advise the board um, on the uh, Parking Plan Advisory Committee. We met again today and just uh, like to make a change in our report out date because the city manager and Alderman Odom will be gone next week and what we would like to do is, is slip that schedule into November for our recommendations presentation at the work session in, uh, in November and um, we also will be recommending uh, uh, a public hearing uh, after we've made those presentations. So just, just wanted to pass that along, that's all. Alderman Taylor. Yes, sir, how you doing? Thank you very much. I do have a few items. Uh, I'm gonna get comfortable in my seat so y'all get comfortable for a little while. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. <laughs> um, as city manager and um, Alderman Blackson talked about the month fest, a great, great, a great turnout again. Uh, I was out there Friday and I was out there Saturday as well. Sunday at another event. But uh, he talked about the different uh, departments that supported it. But I do want to recognize and kudos to uh, J.R. Sabatini's uh, staff. I know I probably pronounced the name wrong, but uh, I always try. <laughs> Jeff knew I don't try. I leave that alone. So there's two people I got right. <laughs> so it's not on you, Jeff. It's, <laughs> it's everyone. Um, but I do want to give kudos for your staff. Utility Business Office came out and supported uh, all day uh, Saturday and all day Sunday. They always support whenever there's something going on in the community, so they did a wonderful job. So I thank Steve Anderson and his crew for a wonderful job. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, this weekend also, we had a Walk Bellamy Monument presentation. Great event, great event. If you have not seen it, please go by Jones Street and Pollard Street, the connection, Jones and Pollard, look at the monument. Also, when you look at the monument, see the statue there, please don't stop there. Continue to walk around the side of the big hill. There's some benches back there with his whole accomplishments on everything they've done throughout his career. So please take time to go out and visit this great legend of, of New Bern. All right, so please go by there and take time and look at it. Also, again, we still have the same problem, Chief. 
Wait, I seen him talking about Chief Blitz. There you go. And Public Works, City Manager, and the Mayor, and I've spoken on this several times. For some reason, that sign keeps getting knocked down. Ebenezer Historical Market, it is down again on the corner of Broad and Hancock. It is down again. I went by there this morning, and it's laying on the ground. Somebody linked it against the pole, but um, Matt Montaigne said he had it, but it's, it's down. Uh, so we maybe one of the uh, uh, Mumfest vendors did it, but some for some reason that, that sign gets hit quite a bit. So we need to look into that. Matt Montaigne, thank you for, for assisting that. The other item, I'm going to use this first. Residents, I did an interview this afternoon. If you happen to look out your door or pulling out your driveway or pulling in your driveway and you see a sign, a flag out there beside some debris, don't feel alarmed. Go out to the flag and read the flag and see what it's about. It tells you on the flag what's the issue. Uh, survey, gas, uh, litter, uh, something. So read the flag. If you still do not understand it, contact Public Works, Matt Montaigne, or David Cox, and they can tell you more about it. But please do not just leave it out there, because if you leave it out there, the city's gonna leave it out there. You're not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna move it, they're not gonna move it. So it's gonna be a tug of war. So please read these style flags. Go walk out there to it, it's not gonna bite you. Just read it, all right? And then if you still got a question, contact Public Works. The last thing, um, it's not a campaign speech. As you know, I'm not running. Well, I had no plans of running this year. And I hope this is not what the next four years is going to look like. There's Matt Montaigne. There's campaign signs. 95% of them are gone throughout the city of New Bern. But there's 5% that's still lingering around. And the one street that I've noticed the last few days is Country Club Road. Those of you all that put campaign signs up on Country Club Road have not went and retrieved those signs. They're still sitting there. As I counted, I didn't count, but I could guesstimate. If I estimate, guesstimate, I would say at least 20 signs are still on the Country Club Road. So Matt Montaigne is gonna tell you uh, the procedure about ca campaign signs, and I hope you all heed to his instructions and the policies and procedures, citywide and statewide and countywide. Matt Montaigne. Uh, short and sweet, in accordance to the ordinance, the uh, campaign signs are allowed to be out uh, for th up to three days after the election. So with the election being on Tuesday, the candidates had until Friday to remove all the campaign signs. Uh, at that time, if they're not picked up, the city has the right to pick them up and, and hold them or do what we need to do with them. Um, we started picking some up Friday night and Saturday in the, in the downtown area in preparation for the MUM Festival, but there are still many signs out throughout the rest of the town uh, that we can certainly start picking up if need be. Okay, thank you. As you heard, the Public Works Director, Matt Montaigne, just gave you the rules and regulations of campaign signs. However, it should not be the responsibility of the city to go by and pick up a campaign sign that an individual <coughs> paid for and set out there. That's misuse of city staff time, work, gas, and everything. So it should not be the responsibility of the city to go by. If I lost or won, I should go back and get my signs myself and pick them up, put them in the waste bin, and make sure you, if you get a flag, make sure you do something with them. But it should be the city's responsibility to go by and pick up those signs. Country Club Road, you put a lot of signs out there. If you lost, I'm sorry. If you won, congratulations. But go by and pick up your signs. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to echo everything that Alderman Taylor said about the, the signs. Um, it's, it's appropriate during an election, it's not afterwards. And it is not appropriate for city personnel to be picking up signs that a candidate left out there. So thank you for bringing that to the public's attention. Other than that, I only have one thing. Uh, as you might recall, I was appointed to the NPO board to represent the city along with Alderman White. 
Since my term is coming to an end, I would like to provide a month of turnover to my replacement, and therefore I would like to nominate Alderman Odom to take my slot so that we can turn over during the month of November. Sir. Motion and a second. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion to say aye. 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 All opposed the same. That's all okay. Alderman Kinsey. Not tonight, sir. Alderman White. Yes, sir, I have about two. One is uh, the Walk Bellamy Monument. As Alderman Taylor was stating, the song Jones, Pop, Jones and the Main Street out there is Pollock, but it's Jones and Liberty. It's in between Jones and Liberty around the fall. The other thing that we were talking about was, our, uh, that I was thinking about, like all the woman E.T. was saying, I, I am also on that board, and I may want to appoint somebody, but not this time. I need to talk to these people. And when I come up with a good person, I get back to you before then, and we can carry it out. Other than that, something else I want to talk about, but I can't remember, so it must not be important. <laughs> we keep around rolling on. Okay. Next. Mayor, real quick, um, what I'll do is, is I'll have Brenda for, for the board members who will be uh, vacating their seats come December. What I can do is I'll have Brenda look at all the different boards that e uh, each one of those individuals sit on, and then we will provide that as a list to the board uh, coming up, if that works. Okay, Alderman Odom. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor, just one thing. Um, I talked to the city manager about this over the weekend, received several comments, and not necessarily some complaints, but some concerns with the dogs at Mumfest. Um, it's supposed to be no dogs in the festival area, um, but what um, really caught the attention of some, there was, there was a gentleman walking around with either two or three pit bulls, they said, and some of them even had the muzzles over their mouths, I guess, to um, you know, maybe prohibit something uh, bad from happening. I understand that there's some regulations with service animals and things of that nature, but I think we need to, of course, we've got a year now to look into it, figure out what our options are, but um, I, I think if we're gonna say there's no animals, there should be no animals that, unless they're protected under you know, whatever the service uh, dog issue may be. But um, I saw quite a few, actually, I have nothing against them. I have a dog, believe it or not, um, but I saw a, a baby stroller that had like five chihuahuas on it when someone was walking down the street. So it's cute to look at, but if you're gonna have rules, you have to have rules for a reason. So I think that's something that we probably need to look at and be prepared for come next year. That's all I have, sir. Okay, all the point, you have something Yes, else? sir, I, I didn't look down on my paper. I have one, uh, this is direct to the city manager. Uh, do the city itself have any interim positions open for those which are in college or those that's working on their masters? Um, we, we typically do have some positions that we fill with the interns during the summer and obviously a lot of times I think JR you have a couple and, yes, sir. and uh, I think we've had some in, in other departments as well. Um, generally speaking it's kind of a, a workload type especially if it's going to be a paid internship. Some colleges they will not even allow students to receive payment um, okay. uh, because they're actually trying to get credit for a class. Uh, but we uh, oftentimes we'll, we'll look at those uh, per department as to the needs and the workload that's, that's available for internships and that they are. Uh, typically that's kind of an early spring uh, whenever we start uh, trying to put that together. I ask the question because I, I often talk about you coming back to New Bern to work in quality jobs and I received this or mail, email from someone, a student who graduated, I can say graduated from Newburn High, graduated from East Carolina. This person is working on their master's in Houston. And I don't know where they send everybody yeah. else. So they also asked, asked me, did I know anything? And before I contact this person, I'd like to be able to tell this person something. So. When I I'll, end out, I return my calls and emails to everybody we, that I want to talk to. We have already responded to that individual. I think uh, not only you, but probably about six or seven other individuals probably received that. But uh, we uh, most certainly will keep him in mind uh, should a position uh, be available. Okay, appreciate it. 
Okay. Or, One more quick yes, thing. Sir. I do want to send out my condolences to the uh, Simpson family. Uh, Gerald Simpson, uh, classmate of mine, uh, he passed last Saturday. His funeral will be this Saturday at 12 o'clock at Oscar's Mortuary. Um, young guy, about as young as I am. So uh, I do want to send out condolences for the Gerald, Gerald Simpson family from the Bryce Creek area. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, do we need a closed session tonight? We do, Mayor. Pursuant to 143, 1311A5 to discuss uh, the potential acquisition by CLR Exchange of Real Property um, for two different parcels. So moved. Second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, say motion carries.